Mid lane is one of the most complex roles in the entire game. There's a lot that you definitely need to be paying attention to when playing this role, so a lot of players can get overwhelmed and forget to do things, or they might not even know that they should be doing certain things. Today, we're going to cover all of the things that you need to be doing in the first 5 to 7 minutes to guarantee that you're making the most of your mid lane gameplay and pressuring the map as much as possible. If you get done with this video and you're wanting more, then make sure to check out our website, GameLeap.com, where we have a mid lane essentials course covering all of the basics and everything you could possibly want to know about mid lane. Check us out using the link in the description below. Alright, getting right into these mid lane tips, the first thing that you're going to want to do is actually going to pertain to vision, and this is that you're going to want to get a deep ward on the enemy raptors, either level 1 or 2. This ward is a jungle tracking ward, and it allows you to tell what camps the jungler has and has not done when they path over that ward. If they take the raptors, then you'll be able to tell where they are for an extended period of time, but if they just path over it, that's okay. You can still track the jungler using that ward by looking at how much CS they had when they pathed over that ward and using the knowledge that you have of where they started, either top side or bot side. The reason why this ward is so important is it allows you to determine what side of the map the enemy jungler is going to be on when scuttles spawn. This means you know which scuttle you'll need to contest and if you're going to need to roam to your jungler to help them out. Alternatively, what you might see some pros do is place a ward right on the border of the river and the entrance to the red side jungle. Now this ward is a little bit peculiar to some people because it's not in a brush, it's just sitting there. But this ward is a lot better than just placing it in one of the brushes to either side of mid lane because it's going to give you a lot more vision. You can tell when they go into your mid lane brush, or if they're going into the river, or if they're going back into their jungle. This ward gives a lot more information, so this is why a lot of pros like to use it. You would typically use this one instead if you're playing against an aggressive jungler, something that really likes to gank, even as early as level 2. This ward is definitely going to protect you a whole lot more from jungle ganks than placing a ward directly on raptors. but. If you're not worried that you're going to get ganked at all, and you just want to know what side of the map the enemy jungler is on, then the Raptor Ward is actually going to be better. Now pairing with this, the second thing that you want to do is you want to try to get lane priority when the first scuttles are spawning. This is going to be a lot more impactful than any other scuttle because if you get lane priority and you're able to, say, kill the enemy jungler 2v1 on one of the scuttle crabs, then this means your jungler is walking away with a kill and the double scuttle, which means they're going to be so far ahead. Lane priority in the early game can be very, very impactful, especially if the enemy jungler doesn't respect it. Now, lane priority is also going to be important anytime any scuttle spawns or when the enemy buffs are spawning, because again, these are impactful moments that you might see jungle on jungle action. And if you can intervene and make that a 2v1, your chances of winning are going to skyrocket. Now these plays are obviously made easier if you know what side of the jungle the enemy jungler is on, but this isn't always possible. Sometimes you just don't know where the enemy jungler is. And for this reason, the third tip is you're going to want to play to the side of the map that your jungler is on whenever possible. This means when roaming and just when positioning in lane. Now sometimes you're just going to be on the opposite side of the map that your jungler is on and that's completely okay. But if you are completely blind, you don't have any wards and you know that the enemy jungler is looking to gank you, then you're going to be a whole lot more safe if you play closer to your jungler rather than opposite to them. In a worst case scenario, you can just run straight to your jungler and then it'll be a 2v2. But if you're on the opposite side of the map and the enemy mid laner is in between you and your jungler, then suddenly that option is no longer there. Next up is actually going to be identifying your lane matchup, specifically identify the win condition of the lane. Are you playing a very easy lane where all you need to do is get one certain item and then you have kill pressure? 
or are you playing a counter matchup where you're going to have to itemize very specifically in order to just survive and then farm out? Now, a lot of this is going to come from prior experience in the matchup, and that's completely okay. Sometimes you just got to play the matchup in order to learn it, and you won't really know the win condition yet. But you want to keep in mind some of the things that you're doing that are successful and some of the things that aren't winning. That way, for your next games, you'll know beforehand what you should and should not be doing. We're going to go over three examples of win conditions here, just so you guys get the general gist of the things you should be looking for. Now, the first is going to be a hard lane. This is something like Cassadin into Talon. In this lane, I know that it's really hard to win and I should not be killing him early. In fact, if I take too many trades early on into the game, I could possibly die. Talon is very, very aggressive early on into the game and does a ton of physical damage, and Cassadin just does not have the armor to deal with this. So it's much better if I just leave him alone and try to freeze my wave as close to my tower as possible. This will give me as much safety as I can get, allowing me to farm without being at risk of dying. On my first base, I'm going to want a Seeker's Arm Guard, and I want to start stacking that Arm Guard up as quickly as possible, getting all that juicy armor. Once I have enough armor, I'll definitely be able to fight Talon, and once I have level 6, I get a lot more safety. I probably won't be able to kill him at any point, but that's okay. I'm just looking to get as much farm as possible and get my items because I know as Cassadin into Talon, I'm just going to outscale him and out team fight him later. Alright, so if we look at this from the flip side, Talon into Cassadin, then Talon has a few things that he's going to want to look to do. First of all, he's going to want to look for an all in at level 2. This is one of Talon's strongest points in the game because he just does so much damage, and if Cassadin walks too far up, you can score a kill on him. So you're going to want to push to get level two before Cassadin and then level two all in him if allowed. Past this, the second thing you're going to look for in this lane is you want to crash the wave into his tower. This will deny him a freeze and actually give you an opportunity to freeze yourself, which means you can zone him from gold and DXP. And if he walks too far up, this means you can go for a kill. If Cassadin gets too far behind on gold, or he's not able to itemize a full Seekers early on into the game, then this means that the amount of pressure he's going to exert in the lane phase is going to be fairly non-existent, and you're just going to be free to do whatever you want. Finally, once you establish enough dominance in this lane, you're going to want to roam to the other lanes and into the jungle to spread your lead across the map. Now, the final example of a win condition is going to be a stalemate lane, something like TF into Galio. Neither of these champions should be killing each other in lane, and they both have plenty of shove, meaning they're not really going to be hitting towers either. The win condition in this lane for both sides is going to be revolving around who can impact the map better. Whoever roams better and makes better plays using their ultimate is going to come out ahead in this lane. Likewise, whoever punishes bad plays made by these champions is going to gain a lead in the lane itself. For this exact reason, the win condition for both sides is to create beneficial waves that you can then crash into the enemy tower to deny a roam timer from the enemy mid and then roam to the side lane, diving if possible, but if not, just ganking using your ultimate. When it's not possible to gain lane priority, say for example you're playing against the enemy jungler and the mid lane, and the enemy jungler is just spam ganking mid, then what you want to do in this lane is to put a deep ward in the lane to spot out any roams that could happen and then ping those roams out. These are three of the most common win conditions for any lane. It's a roaming lane, a winning lane, and a losing lane, so you can apply them to other matchups as well. The best way to apply these win conditions to other matchups is simply by knowing what itemization you're going to want early on into the game. Typically, winning lanes can win harder with specific items, and losing lanes can be made even with the right item. For this reason, it's very important to identify what item you want to buy on your first base early on into the game before you actually make that base. This means that you're going to be much more likely to back with the right amount of gold at the right time and start pressuring your lane as soon as possible. 
I've seen people base with 800 gold and then they don't know what to buy, so they buy another Doran's Ring and a Dark Seal, when instead they should have been itemizing towards a lost chapter. This means you have to wait a whole nother 1300 gold just to get that lost chapter, when if you had just stayed for another 500 gold, you could have gotten it that much earlier. In the mid lane, about 90% of the time, your first item should be for lane phase to help you win your lane as hard as possible or to farm or to generally just achieve your win condition. Extending past this point, you're also going to want to identify what the enemy mid laner wants to buy on their first base. So going back to the Talon versus Kassadin matchup, Talon wants a serrated Dirk and Kassadin wants a Seeker's Arm Guard. If Talon is able to deny Kassadin that Seekers, then he's going to have kill pressure, which is huge. Talon should have priority in this matchup, which means he gets to dictate when both people base. He can perform a very heavy trade on Kassadin and force him to base, taking a base himself, and then both of them should return to lane at the same time. Once Talon has enough gold to get his Seeker's Arm Guard, he should definitely be pressuring the lane as hard as possible and trying to get Kassadin to base as well. This is because at this point he is very likely to have more gold than Kassadin, meaning he should be able to buy his Serrated Dirk and Kassadin should not be able to afford Seeker's Arm Guard yet. If Talon does not jump on this opportunity though and he just decides to wait a few hundred extra gold so he can get another longsword on top of that, then suddenly he missed his window of opportunity. Kassadin's going to be able to buy that Seeker's Arm Guard and he's going to have a lot less pressure in lane. Identifying what item you want first and what item your enemy wants first is so important to being able to win the lane early. Because if you're able to get your item without the enemy laner getting theirs, this means that you can just hard win the lane from that point. Finally, as a mid laner, it is very important to gain vision control in the river and around your lane. This means that on your first base, if possible, you want to buy a pink ward and put it somewhere. It doesn't really matter where, and various places in the lane are going to be better than others in various games, but you can never really go wrong by just placing it in the bot lane pixel brush. This is going to be one of the highest value pink wards in the entire game because of the importance of dragon, the importance of roaming to bot lane, and the importance of the jungler just walking around that area, ganking mid, doing dragon, and various other reasons. It's just so strong for so many different reasons. Remember that as a mid laner, you're going to be absorbing and exerting the most pressure in the game. You're able to roam, but you're also able to be roamed too. You're able to help the jungler, but the enemy jungler can also gank you. Any pressure that you exert can be exerted back onto you with relative ease. And this is why vision close to you is very, very important and why vision in the river is also so important. If you're able to buy a pink ward as the mid laner, definitely do it. It's only 75 gold and it allows you to make plays that normally would not be able to happen. Now, I will admit, the lower rated you get, the less important the vision game is. A lot of players just don't have the map awareness, they won't ping out roams, so even if you do walk over wards, your roam can still be successful. In general, the lower you get, the less valuable wards are simply for this reason. But if you are a player that is hellbent on improvement, then this means you should be getting those pink wards, you should be working on your map awareness. You should be trying to learn the vision game because this is something that's going to take a lot of time and the sooner you get practicing, the better you'll get. Another tool that's really going to help you out as far as improving at the game is our website gameleap.com. Over there we've got hundreds of guides, all done by challenger players, sorted into a quick and easy to use courses system. We have courses both on the 5 fundamental roles as well as champion specific courses. So if that is something that interests you, then make sure to check us out using the link in the description below. As always, I'm Panther, I hope you learned something valuable, and I will see you in the next one.